Here is our next example. E implies E plus E. E implies E star E. E implies this. Left parenthesis E, right parenthesis. E implies a non terminal A or B or C or D. So, capital E is a non terminal, these four are terminals. So, something like you want to generate an expression A plus A or A plus B, A plus D or C star D, A star D or you want to have uh, something like A plus B star C and you want to introduce parenthesis, then you can use this grammar. Now, for example, let me take E implies E plus E. Then let me choose this for this. Then it becomes E plus E star E. Okay. Now I substitute. Let me substitute A for this. Then say D for this. B for this. So we get this expression starting from this. One can also do the following. Let me take E implies left parenthesis E right parenthesis. Then this I replace by E plus E and now we know that E implies this. So let me write this for this. Then E plus for this let me write E star E. Now you can replace with appropriate one a plus D star B plus. And this one, one can interpret like A plus D. With that, you can multiply B. Or you first perform D star B. With that, you can add A. So, there are two possibilities. Some kind of ambiguity is there. But over here, it's precise because of uh, parenthesis uh, we know the order of execution this has to be executed first before we perform the addition okay so this is one simplest form using which you can generate uh, expressions involving uh, plus and star now we want to know whether this grammar is in cnf uh, with this Answer is no. Now, first, let's simplify by removing uh, epsilon productions, unit productions, and useless symbols. Now, on simplification, we still get this. Now, let's go for uh, CNF construction. Now, E implies E, E1 and E1 implies E2, E and E2 implies plus. Okay, so plus is an operator, star is an operator, A, B, C, D, they are all like identifiers. So A, B, C, D plus star, left parenthesis, right parenthesis, they are all part of uh, sigma. And non-terminal contains E alone. So now this one is converted into CNF like this. E implies uh, E, E1 and E1 implies plus E. For plus, I introduce one more non-terminal and followed by E, we get this.
on the similar line uh, if you convert this into cnf we get e implies e followed by e3 and e3 implies e4 followed by e e4 implies star following similar style we get e implies e5 e6 e5 implies left parenthesis e6 implies e e7 e7 implies right parenthesis and these things are valid e implies a e implies b e implies c e implies d okay now you see that uh, here is a grammar in which you find exactly one terminal or two non terminals and now this clearly respects cnf property most importantly the language accepted by this and the language accepted by this are one and the same and for a grammar which is not accepting empty string one can always come up with an equivalent uh, chomsky normal form or cnf grammar following this procedure okay there are couple of uh, interesting things to note as part of derivation trees for example for this one if you look at the derivation tree we will have e implies e plus e and for this e we get a and for this e we get e star e and for this we get d for this we get b so this is an arbitrary tree but for this same expression you derive using cnf expression we obtain a binary tree so e implies e e1 and this e implies a e1 implies e2 followed by e e2 implies plus and e implies e e3 and e3 implies e4 e and for this e we get d for uh, e4 we get star for this we get b okay so for this it turns out to be ternary tree but in general it can be any tree but derivation using uh, cnf uh, formula or cnf expression it will always give us a binary tree so for any string in l of g the underlying derivation tree is a binary tree in fact this will help us in understanding uh, the class of languages class of context free languages and how for example when we talked about uh, pumping lemma for regular sets we said you choose this string and there is a substring which you can pump so many times with that you can generate so many other strings that are part of the language so you choose one string with that you generate infinitely many strings which are part of the language on the similar line you choose one 
string which is part of the language the binary tree the underlying binary tree or the underlying derivation tree tells you that there are uh, substrings which you can pump or in some sense which you can kind of uh, read more and more and you still generate a string which is part of the language so something similar to pumping lemma for regular sets one can talk about pumping lemma for uh, context free sets meaning certain languages are not context free to show that uh, there is a pumping lemma in the context of context free and that in the context of context free languages which are derived or which are based out of uh, cnf uh, expressions which are uh, based on uh, cnf uh, derivation trees the underlying binary tree is helping us to understand non context free languages okay so we will look at couple of examples and with that we will identify meaning we choose a string we look at uh, the underlying binary tree and we show that here is a substring which can be pumped so many times and uh, every time you pump you generate a string which is part of the language okay and if you cannot uh, do so then we we say that uh, here is a string uh, which is not generated therefore this language is not uh, context free okay so something like that so essentially the simplification followed by chomsky normal form on one side it is giving us a uh, binary tree the binary representation for uh, a given string which is part of the language on the other side it is also helping us to understand uh, the context free sets given a string which is part of the language can i generate some more strings can i generate infinitely many strings using this can this string act as a base with that can you generate every other string and if you cannot generate uh, some of them then you say there is something wrong which means uh, the given language is not uh, a context free one okay with this intuitive picture uh, we shall discuss uh, pumping lemma for context free sets and once we talk about that we will show that uh, languages like a power n b power n c power n a power n factorial they are not context free okay so something similar to chomsky normal form there is something called griba normal form that we shall discuss and then we'll talk about properties of context free sets and so on